what do you have to say about the fintech to diffuse any new technology what is required you need actors networks and institutions unless you have all three you the, the diffusion actually doesn't take place right whatever be the technology if you want large scale diffusion you need that to happen and that is where you actually see the fintechs the actors the banks you know the networks we all are an ecosystem everybody has an interdependency and that's how you see large scale diffusion happen what does it take to be a leader you know margaret thatcher once said right uh, your 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 thoughts define your words your words define your actions your actions define your character and your character determines your destiny so i am a believer of destiny but having said that i think three things that at least i have i uphold when i go about my day to day work is courage the second is about persistence and i think the third is about being a servant leader money is chasing profit and money is not chasing ideas both are important but you need a profitable idea Sonali, I'm very excited to be talking to you. So I have to tell before we start the interview that I watched you in action last time when we met, and I uh, chased for this interview. I wanted to talk to you because one, I still don't see many women at the top leadership in banks as of today. So I was very excited to see you, and you were refreshingly very different than what one imagines a typical banker. And then I also got to know that you also, among different things, the different businesses that you lead in the largest private bank in the country, HDFC, you also, you know, work with startups. You lead the startup vertical also. So tell us how the journey has been. Tell us about your your story. Lovely to be here, and thank you so much, Radha, for having me on your show. Uh, absolutely delighted. I think it's been a fabulous journey being at HDFC Bank. I've been here five plus years now, and I look after multiple businesses. You know, government institution, institutions, uh, now startups, and I think it's been an absolutely incredible and fascinating journey. Uh, you're actually right. I'm not a banker by training. I'm a non-linear hire at the bank. But I think the bank has been very welcoming. Uh, you know, we have a great set of colleagues. Uh, and to be able to put together the businesses, we built this business um, with focus. I would say it was always there, mm. but we built it with focus in the last five years to become the largest private sector bank now in these areas. So yes, it's been an exhilarating journey, and I'm you know looking forward to doing a lot more in the coming years. I love if you could uh, share with everyone. How is the bank HDFC participating in the startup growth story? I think we've always recognized, uh, you know, uh, when we set up this business, which was set up uh, before I came, and we are kind of rebooting it in a way. We've always, as a bank, believe in the philosophy that startups will play an important role, mm -hmm. and they need to be nurtured. We were a startup ourselves, right, when we started out. So we totally. Uh, uh, believe and uh, in in providing all the support to startups as a bank we've actually rebooted the program now so we've set up a a, a new you know we've revamped the product uh, in addition to that we've actually added a whole set of cross function um, i would say cross sell products uh, as well so for instance we now have commercial buy, uh, commercial cards available for personal expenses mm -hmm. as well as professional expenses backed by for, you know fixed deposits which is not easy to get when you're starting out uh, we have an, a regulatory reporting desk of RBI. So when you receive inward remittances and when you're actually being funded, how do you do the regulatory filings, right? We actually have that as part of our retail FX trade uh, trade desk. We also have, uh, uh, we, you know, we've set up the policy under the central uh, uh, credit guarantee scheme uh, for startups. So that itself is, you know, given us the ability to be able to lend to startups basis the criteria that the government has defined. Uh, we've, uh, you know, set up a whole bunch of value-added services. So insurance, for example, we've worked with our uh, group company to be able to put a specific insurance policy for startups. So it's not easy to give startups insurance, you know, for them to give group insurance to their yeah. employees. Uh, so we are doing a whole bunch of things around startups to be able to create a very enabling set of banking uh, and financial services products for them. 
to be able to you know nurture their growth right uh, so we are very excited about that and uh, you know we look forward to to making sure that you know we provide all of that support through our large distribution network of 8000 plus branches uh, to startups across the country i mean traveling across the country in the last 6 months from guwahati bhubaneswar all parts of india you know to in tier 2 three towns and the government data also says nearly 50% of startups are coming from smaller towns the uh, tier 2 tier 3 uh, what are you doing for that segment for those startups you know one beauty about our bank has been and the strategy of this bank when it was set up is that we provide all products across all branches mm. so it's the same thing for startups we have a large distribution network you know 52% of our branches are in semi urban and rural areas so our products are available to everybody it's not about being in bombay or bangalore to avail our products you can be you know in muzaffarabad and still get it from our branches there so i think in that way you know you equity of product is what we have always done as a bank and we do the same thing for startups sonali there has been a spurt of fintechs in the country and uh, we've seen so much of innovation and uh, i represent the fintech world as in you know engage a lot with fintech startups they've been in the news for good bad reasons recently but what do you have to say about the fintech the innovation that is happening and what are some of the growth opportunities that you see so shraddha let me start by telling you uh, many years ago i wrote a paper at oxford on diffusion theory mm. which really talks about what is it what to diffuse any new technology yeah. what is required you need actors networks and institutions yeah. unless you have all three you the, the diffusion actually doesn't take place right so i think it's the same thing whatever be the technology if you want large scale diffusion you need that to happen and that is where you actually see the fintechs the actors the banks you know the networks we all are an ecosystem everybody has an interdependency and that's how you see large scale diffusion happen for example now we are working very closely with razorpay of course it's a grown up fintech now it's a licensed entity and we've just recently launched collect now with them which is actually brings together for the first time convergence of offline and online payments right for the government and institutional segment so there is a lot of action that happens and so i think that is how one must look at diffusion at an aggregate level something that got me excited is that you're also talking about gig banking it's new because gig economy in our country the conversation around it is new so what are you thinking a gig workers first of all let me say two things uh, go across the entire continuum from blue collar gray collar to actually white collar so the world is changing the way work is happening is changing today 40% of the us economy is dependent on free of the workforce is are, are actually freelancers yeah. in the us right so obviously the future of work there's a big debate globally on what is the future of work right uh, we are a large vibrant uh, country with a large young demographic population and i think that there is room to create products for this segment of people who want to do freelance work by choice who who want to be able to enjoy their independence and still make a living and so yes we are working on a very innovative set of products for them uh, we will soon be launching it and that's when we'll tell you more okay we look forward to it you know this question is very close to my heart and and i'm sure as a woman you'll relate to it that in spite of all the growth that we've seen in the startup ecosystem it's less than 2% of funding that has gone to women led businesses and and i still feel that there is a lot of asymmetry when it comes to women uh, building startups what do you what do you have to say about this and how can we uh, you know collectively look at making this better firstly i think uh, everything can always become better uh, having said that i think we are in a great spot startups have just about been a 6 7 8 year phenomenon where they've actually gathered huge momentum and attention in the country I think uh, women are already a large part of the workforce and we have seen that and we will see the same thing happen in the startup ecosystem. You know, if you look at the workforce as well, today compared to where what we were 10 years ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have seen a lot more women come up, right? And in the same way, so the with the passage of time, you will see these changes happen. Startup is too new and I and I think for, frankly when I deal with startups, I actually do run into a lot of women. So yes and I think startups we are very women friendly as well in that sense right because they allow you to pursue your passions and the same way that men do it so I think this this gender uh, related aspect is not really 
the aspect around startups. I think startups are, you know, starting to get mature. And just like you see in the workforce, you know, the numbers of women increasing, you'll see the same thing happen in startups. I'd love to hear from you. What do you think would be the next big thing in the in our country's startup ecosystem? I think there'll be two things um, which I will articulate. I think first, which is already beginning to happen is the whole focus on profit. Mm. And, you know, business has always been the fundamentalist profit. And I think that is now beginning to become key. And it's not just in India, we're seeing it the world over, which is actually a very good thing for the startup ecosystem. So I think that's the first thing that is already playing out and you will see it at more accentuated levels because now it is money is chasing profit and money is not chasing ideas. Both are important, but you need a profitable idea. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. So that's one. I think the second is ONDC. Whenever that is going to happen at scale, and I know that they're doing a lot of stuff right now. I think ONDC is going to be very, very big when it comes to startups because the whole fundamental thesis of ONDC is to provide digital real estate to every business through a protocol based system. Can you just imagine if every business has to be given digital real estate, you're going to see a whole new league of startups come together that will actually set up, you know, uh, digital real estate for textiles that will set it up for, you know, home entrepreneurs that may set it up for, you know, um, exporters of certain yeah. goods or handicrafts, right? So you're going to see a lot of that happen as ONDC, you know, gathers more and more momentum. And I think it's a fabulous idea that we have put together as a, as a nation. And I think ONDC could, you know, create the next S-curve for the startup industry. You know, there are so many of us who go through the same process of learning, education, being in workplaces. But some of us go on to create more impact. Some of us go on to become leaders. What do you think it are some of the things? And, and, and especially from your journey, if you would tell us, is that what does it take to be a leader? So I think that's a very interesting question. I, uh, let me tell you the three. I have three beliefs. And another aspect that I believe contribute to a person and above all, let me say it, uh, it's also all about your destiny. Mm -hmm. But uh, when it comes to your, and your destiny is also like, you know, Margaret Thatcher once said, right? Uh, your, your, your thoughts define your words, your words define your actions, your actions define your character and your character determines your destiny. Mm -hmm. So I am a believer of destiny. But having said that, I think uh, there's one thing that I can clearly say, right, is uh, three things that at least I ha I uphold when I go about my day-to-day -day work is courage. Mm -hmm. I think uh, leaders have to have the courage to be a voice and not an echo in a room. I think that's extremely important. Uh, sometimes it can also lead to being unpopular, but I think if in the in hindsight, it's always appreciated when you look back, right? The second is about persistence. It, a persistence is, is, and tenacity is a very, very important aspect of anyone's journey in life, right? Personal or professional. Because, yeah. you know, the, if the sun doesn't shine every day, right? If there are cloudy days and you have morning and you have night, but you've got to be persistent and hang in there because, you know, that's the cycle of life. So persistence, I think, is an extremely important aspect and the ability to see the positive in a situation. I think that allows you to become persistent, right? And I think the third is about being a servant leader. And that I learned a lot actually in my formative years, mm -hmm. uh, because you know, you are as good as your team. That is fundamental. Unless as a good leader, you don't roll your sleeves and get your hands dirty, right? Uh, you will never build a winning team. And my complete belief is that as a leader, if you don't make yourself redundant, you haven't done your job. And very few uh, people think like that. Actually, it's true, right? Because if I don't build a team that can function without me, how am I going to do something else? So I think those are very important aspects. And I think another extremely important aspect uh, is to have great mentors and, and you know, colleagues that you can mentors and as you become, you know, more and more senior about, you know, few colleagues that you can be honest with and be authentic with. Because no matter how, you know, senior a person becomes, ultimately, everybody needs guidance because you learn every day. And you, and you have to be, and to learn, you have to feel safe. 
and to feel safe you either need to have a mentor mentee relationship is fabulous because you both learn the mentor learns as well as the mentee learns right so my some of my most fun moments in my team meetings are with my junior guys in the team right because they are actually the ones asking the funny questions something i'm learning from you know something they are learning from me those are actually the more enriching conversations that i have and and if you believe it or not in the same way if you have colleagues with whom you can have a heart to heart and say i'm really feeling this about it you know they can sometimes very quickly change your perspective and yeah. which i think is is a very important part of your own personal growth because leadership is about personal growth at the end of the day right so that's the way i look at it yeah you know when you answer when you answer this I see that you've lived it all, <laughs> all the points. <laughs> I think, I think, I, I think I learn every day. Yeah. Let me say that. Yeah. So Nali, wonderful talking to you. Thank you so much, and I hope this is a start of the many conversations that we will do. Absolute pleasure. Thank you, Shraddha.